Welcome to this video tutorial on guaranteeing messaging high availability using Solus messaging appliances. The purpose of this video is to introduce viewers to the high availability or HA feature, give viewers an understanding of the technical aspects that make up this feature, get into what differentiates Solus' solution, and to show a live demonstration of the Solus appliance failovers with streaming clients, sending a reasonably high rate of traffic through the appliance. We'll look at administrative failovers and a power failure of the primary appliance. A messaging system can have redundancy, but if the switch over time is too long and variable, does it satisfy your high availability requirements? Traditional middleware products keep all of their state on disk. If there is a system failure, then standby must retrieve all state from disk before it can resume providing service, which can take minutes or tens of minutes depending on the amount of data stored. Products from Solus Systems use a patented approach to maintain hot state in proprietary hardware on both active and standby systems. Activity switches can then complete in seconds rather than minutes. This is the focus of this video and we will shortly see a Solus failover and observe the minimal impact on applications. The Solus high availability feature provides full appliance redundancy within the data center, eliminating all potential single points of failure. How is this accomplished? The system is made up of the following components. Two Solus appliances working together in active hot standby configuration. To support guaranteed messaging, each Solus appliance has an assured delivery blade, or ADB, which implements a non-volatile store using a combination of FPGAs, on-card DRAM, and proprietary hardware. The ADBs of each appliance have a redundant direct connection to their mate ADB via two 10 gigabit fiber links. These appliances also have shared access to an external disk array for use in storing messages for slow or offline consumers. Connectivity to the SAN is through a dual-ported HPA card installed in each Solus appliance, providing each appliance with a redundant path to the SAN. Great, so let's look at some message flow to really understand what this all means. To start with, a publishing application will send a message into the primary Solus appliance. When a message is received from the publisher, the Solus appliance looks up the destination and transfers the message payload along with the destination to the ADB using direct memory access. This is much faster than even flash memory, enabling this transfer to happen with very low latency. Simultaneous to this, the FPGA on the ADB is also transferring a copy of the message payload and destination queues to the ADB on the standby system over the redundant fiber connection. Both transfers are fully synchronous and the acknowledgement is not sent to the publisher until the message is safely stored in both the active and standby appliances. If the standby appliance is offline, the data stored in the ADB on the active is still 100% safe thanks to the Solus proprietary hardware. With the message now guaranteed in the Solus appliance message spool, the Solus appliance can acknowledge the message back to the publisher. At this point, the publishing application is guaranteed that the appliance will deliver this message. If the destination subscriber applications are online, then the message is also immediately sent to these applications. The message will remain on the Solus appliance in the message pool until all consumers of the message have acknowledged the message. Then the message can safely be removed from the message pool. Only if there are offline subscribers will the appliance use a background task to recover space in the ADB by writing blocks of old messages to disk. This task will batch up the oldest messages and write them to disk. This batching will allow the appliance to efficiently use the SAN without sacrificing any of the performance or affecting online consumers. Similarly, when an offline consumer reconnects to the Solus appliance, a background task will retrieve the messages from the SAN and deliver them to the consumer. During failures, the backup appliance takes over the primary appliance's IP address. Since the backup appliance is in hot standby, it does not need to reload messages and message delivery state from disk. That's all stored in its ADB. It can therefore continue to provide service to clients immediately as they reconnect to the backup appliance. The Solus API automatically synchronizes state and eliminates any chance of message loss or duplication in the event of an appliance failover. It's also worth noting that there is component redundancy in the appliance hardware. This means that the active appliance can tolerate and recover from many component failures 
without resorting to an HA failover to the back of a plant or without any impact to the application at all. This means that components like a hard drive, a power supply, a fan, or one or more Ethernet ports can fail without any service impact, just notifications to the management system. Okay, so let's get to the real appliance and see this in action. What I've got set up is 50 parallel streams through the appliance. A stream is a single publisher sending them persistent messages on a unique topic to a single consumer. You then replicate this 50 times and you've got my setup. Each of these publishers will send persistent messages which are 1k bytes in size into the Solus appliance at 2k messages per second. This will give an aggregate ingress rate of 100,000 persistent messages per second into the Solus appliance. Similarly, this will also result in an egress rate of 100,000 persistent messages per second out of the Solus appliance. This puts the traffic at about the mid-range of the capabilities of a single ADB in the Solus appliance, so not particularly stressful for the appliance, but certainly a lot more than any software broker could ever hope to accomplish. As usual, we can make use of Solidmin to inspect the details of the configuration. But we can also use Solidmin's charting capabilities to measure the switchover times by monitoring when traffic starts flowing on the backup Solus appliance. This will give you a true understanding of failover times by measuring when the consuming applications actually successfully reconnect and start receiving traffic from the backup appliance. We'll look at both an administrative switchover and a power failure to the primary appliance which causes an unexpected failure because it is interesting to see how these types of failover times compare in terms of application observed outage times. Okay, so here we have Solidmin, and in Solidmin I've managed two Solus appliances, which I've previously configured as an HA pair, and on these appliances I've also previously configured the appropriate interfaces, VPNs, profiles, usernames, and guaranteed messaging endpoints that match the setup outlined in the previous slide. So before getting to the demonstration, I just wanted to take a quick look at the redundancy feature. For the other setup, it's kind of out of scope of this demo. There are other videos that introduce these features and show how to set them up. And I'd like to keep focused on demonstrating the Solus HA failovers and analyzing the failover times. So if we look here, this is the redundancy configuration. And this statistics and status gathered by the Solus appliance show that the feature is enabled and it's active active mode the link between the mates ADBs are is up and then there is a variety of other detailed status which is out of scope for this presentation but gives intricate details of the status between the two ADBs and the status to the SAN disk for the message spool and it can just generally give a complete picture of the redundancy feature when configuring redundancy, it's as simple as setting the correct router name and VRID such that they both appliances match. And this information is used between the two appliances to establish primary and backup. And then the Manage Redundancy pane of Solidmin allows you also to enable and disable the full feature from here and then execute also a administrative failover. So we'll use that in a second. Now, in order to actually demonstrate the failovers, we need to start the traffic. To do this, I have created a wrapping script which will connect 49 clients and have them bind to message queues. Why 49, not 50? Because I want to save one client for monitoring a message order. So this will connect 49 clients and bind them to the queues. And we can just flip back to Solidmin. And if we go to the Clients tab, we can see that. Here are all the, the clients that have connected. And if we look at the endpoints, the endpoints all have clients bound to them. Now let's start 49 publishing clients. These clients will send at 2,000 messages per second each. Each client will send to a specific queue, and this will make the 49 parallel streams through the system that was described in the demo slide. Actually, just before we start that, I'm going to just enable some stats plotting. So. And why do this? Solidman stats chart is probably the best way to see the failover times from the application's perspective. So we'll set this up and we can start plotting. And initially we'll see no traffic. Once we have traffic and we have failovers, we can use these two graphs to determine the exact failover time from the application's perspective. Okay, so now, it's now let's go back and start traffic. 
And now we can see on the primary that the traffic has come up to just shy of 100,000 messages per second. So now let's start our last client. So a guaranteed messaging feature uh, and high availability feature must fail over quickly in order to be effective, but it's also critical that no messages are lost under any condition. So we'll set up this extra client here, and this client will send to him a queue and monitor message order. In each message it sends, it will embed a message ID, and then on receiving the messages out of the queue, it will make sure that it receives every message ID in order, without duplicate or loss, and report these statistics to us. So we'll start this client up and this client will report some status to the screen here. So now if we return back to the screen, we see a little blip up, that's the last client, and now we're exactly at 100,000 messages per second. And we can confirm that on the Solus primary appliance here by refreshing the statistics, and we see here 100,000 messages per second. So now let's execute an administrative failover and watch the traffic go to the backup. So here we just do a release activity, and this will send all the clients from the primary Solus appliance to the backup. We can monitor that using our screen, screens here. So we see traffic has stopped flowing to the primary, and we see that traffic has now begun flowing to the backup. And that's in red is the ingress message rate, so the first clients to reconnect were the publishers, and then shortly after the subscribers were able to reconnect, their message rate bursts above the publish rate as they catch up, if we stop these two screens now, we can actually look at failover time. So the failure started at around 1640.55, and everybody was reconnected by about 1641.05. say 05. This failover took 10 to 12 seconds for all of the clients to disconnect. Keep in mind this is at 100,000 messages per second. All clients were reconnected around 10 to 12 seconds. So that's quite impressive. Now let's just start this again and then we can fail the clients back to the primary appliance. So to do that, you first administratively accept connectivity again, then you go to the backup appliance, and because we have auto revert disabled, uh, which means that the clients will not automatically connect, then we come back to this feature and we actually force the switch over. And this is the normal way of operating your high availability to avoid automatic failovers. And now if we go back to the graphs, we can see that Again here at 1642 and 30 seconds, all the clients were disconnected, and in about 10 seconds, all of the clients were reconnected to the primary and receiving traffic. So that's really quite, I think, impressive in that it doesn't really matter about message rate or number of clients, the failover times are nicely bound in a low number of seconds. So now let's just throw one more scenario into the mix. Let's consider an unexpected failover, and we'll, we'll do this by failing the power on the primary appliance. So to do that, I have a script created. This script will log into our power cycler and cut the power to the primary Solus appliance. So if we just trigger that. So here in this case, however, we will see that the first stats screen just stops responding, and that's because now that the primary appliance is no longer present, it's not available to respond to the request for statistics. But we can use the last time plot here to calculate failover time. And all of the traffic is now flowing on the backup, so as appliance after the power has failed, that started to fail at about 32 seconds, maybe 35 seconds and by 50 seconds everybody was reconnected to the backup and receiving traffic. So again, 15 to 18 seconds fail over time due to a power failure. Again, no difference from the uh, administrative fail over time. It doesn't really matter what the reason is for failure. It has no effect on the client's ability to reconnect to the backup. So now let's just check on this client that we had monitoring order. So now if we stop so we see here this client sent 542,000 messages, received every message, checked order on every message, and of these messages it did not receive any missing messages, any duplicate, or any out of order messages. So completely clean traffic stream. Let's just review. That was across an administrative fail over, a fail back, and a power failure. This client saw no message lost throughout the whole period of time. 
To summarize, the key points shown in this video is that Solus messaging appliances are easy to configure in HA pairs, making it painless to eliminate the risk of a single point of failure impacting your messaging platform. And Solus HA failover times are consistent and bounded, even at high message rates. And a Solus HA failover will occur in seconds without message loss, minimizing the impact to applications, giving you a messaging platform that you can count on, even when unexpected events occur. The key point to ask yourself is whether your current messaging platform can accomplish this level of performance in the face of unexpected failures. If you're using Solus's messaging platform, you can have confidence in your messaging middleware handling failovers in seconds and allowing your applications to function 24-7. You can use the link on the screen to find out more about the Solus messaging appliance. Thank you.